pretty sure my camera angle changes every single time. Hi guys, my name is Alyssa and welcome back to my channel. Today I have kind of like a chit chatty slash recommendation slash cozy video. I've got my Les Mis sweater on and I am ready to give you some recommendations of I think six books. Yep, <laughs> six books that are backlist and obscure. I love reading older books. I think that it's really interesting and fun and just to kind of bring to light books that most people don't really know of or talk about and I think that that's always cool. I love hearing about those kind of books. In the world of booktube we are constantly bombarded with new books and new authors and new 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 and I think it's kind of fun to take a step back, go back in time if you will, and read some older books. So I've got some recommendations for you because I love reading those kinds of books. So the first one is older, but they just got a cover rebrand, so I'm sure a lot of people have seen this, but that is East by Edith Pateau. This came out, we're gonna, we're gonna look it all up because that's what we do. Originally came out in 2005. It also says 2003, so whatever that means, I think it's 2003. This is about a girl named Rose who lives in some colder regions of the world and she loves adventure and she's always wanted to go on an adventure but her life where she is is kind of stagnant and so one day after some of her family ends up getting really sick they're starving they're hungry this polar bear shows up and says hey literally says hey <laughs> says if you come with me i will save your family and she's like sure cool and we don't really know why he picked her out of everybody and just kind of goes from there. The family dynamic in this book is just so well done. It's really interesting and I think that all the characters were just so well developed, especially Rose and the polar bear, obviously. But she's got a couple brothers, I think, and a couple sisters. Uh, I don't think it, there's any specific place this takes place in. I'm not entirely sure. There's also some interesting representation, um, some like Eskimo people, people group. So that's really cool. And I think that this book is just really underrated. I think it's a really fast read and it's really entertaining. The sequel was okay. The sequel came out not too long ago. So there's like a 10, 12 year gap. But I highly recommend this if you're, especially if you really like polar fantasy, you want a good book to read for the winter, this, this will do it. There's a polar bear. You can't go wrong. The next one is actually one that I've read relatively recently, but I read it back in high school too. And I don't know if a lot of people have read this because I was homeschooled. So this is kind of like one of those homeschool staple books, maybe. And that is The Witch of Blackbird Pond by Elizabeth George Spear. If you like historical romance plus witches, this is it. The witch part, not so much. <laughs> it takes place during the Salem Witch Trials and our main character, whose name I can't remember, <laughs> Kit. She grew up in Barbados and after her grandfather dies, she moves to colonial America and she moves there during the time of the witch trials and she can swim. So when people catch her swimming, because back then if you swam and you float you were a witch, kind of just all goes downhill. And there is a bit of a romance and it's so cute, it's so well done, the side characters are so great, the side character romances are amazing, they'll make you tear up. And I've never teared up over a side character romance quite like this. It's a short book, so you don't have, and it's not a series as far as I know, so you don't have to commit, which is great. It's just like a one done kind of deal. And it's a really, really good book. The writing is pretty good. There's some slow patches in there, but it definitely picks up. If you come into this thinking, oh, it's gonna be mystical and magical and there's gonna be lots of death and witches, please, please don't do that <laughs> like I did. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of that aspect, but there is plenty of intrigue and mystery and all kinds of good stuff. So I highly recommend this one. It's definitely underrated and I think more people would really love this. All right, so my next one is another historical fiction and this is actually a middle grade and that is Countdown by Deborah Wiles. So this is about a girl named Franny who 
lives in Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And you're probably sitting there say, thinking, wait a minute, what was that? I didn't either till I read this book. I did not know about that time in history and it took place in the 60s. Basically what happened in 1962, uh, President Kennedy came on TV and said that, um, says here, goes on television to say that Russia is sending nuclear missiles to Cuba. And they kind of, it, there's a great video, and if I can remember, I'll link it down below, that kind of explains that whole historical week. It follows Franny dealing with the uncertainty of nuclear missiles being sent to her home, friend problems, family drama. It also has a little tiny bit of a romance, and it's just really cute. It was a really good book, and I learned so much from this book and from just that whole, from that video down below. It's kind of interesting because there's pictures, TV interviews that were real or interviews from books or TV and blah, 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 and pictures and stuff from the actual time period. So you get a little taste into all that as well as to what the characters were hearing and seeing because they plugged this everywhere, homes, schools, everywhere. There's actually a video that we watched it was the nuclear missile video or something and we watched that with my book club because we read this for book club and it was very eye-opening the kind of stuff that these people had to go through so recommend this one okay now we're getting into some more fantasies because y'all know me so the first one i'm going to recommend is the edge chronicles by paul stewart and chris riddell I've talked about this one before and I will not stop talking about this one because this is one of my all-time favorite books. This book is my childhood. This got me into writing and loving fantasy books and finding out what kind of books I like to read. This is about a guy named Twig who uh, has to leave his home unfortunately and goes off into the deep woods to get to some other family members but he strays from the path and therefore is thrown into an adventure because you never stray from the path. This book is incredible. <laughs> this series is incredible. It, there are 13 books. I have yet to read the last three. Um, I'm going to soon, <laughs> but oh, it's so good. <laughs> this is so imaginative and so unique. The first book is a little slow, but once you get past that, the rest are just explosive and so many things happen and it's just, now you might recognize the name, Chris Riddell. He's done a lot of illustrations for Neil Gaiman stuff and he is just a fantastic illustrator. As far as I know, this is his first time doing books. Don't quote me on that, but it's pretty great. There's made up creatures, made up worlds and races. Everything in this book is unique and different. And I think that that just shows the amount of creativity these authors have and it's just so interesting. It's probably one of the most unique fantasies I've ever read just for the sheer fact that there's no humans in this book and there's so many different kinds of creatures that you just are like, how did they come up with all this? And still to this day, I have no idea. This is definitely an underrated fantasy series. It, more people should read this. It's fantastic. So the next one is kind of funny because I've read this twice now, I think. And I've never continued the series, so I can't speak on the rest of the books, but I want to one of these days. And that is The Shamer's Daughter by Lena Cabral. So this is interesting, to say the least. This is another middle grade about a girl who has this power and they call the Shamers. And basically what happens when they look into the eyes of someone, they can see all of the bad things they've done. And it's pretty terrible. Our main character is a shamer. Her mom is also a shamer and her mom is asked to come help and look into the eyes of this criminal. And so she goes by herself, but then her mom doesn't come back. So our main character decides to go on a mission to find her mother and figure out what's going on. And it's pretty fantastic. It's such a unique ability. Just the way these characters use their powers can either be really great or really malicious. And our main character kind of deals with, you know, trying to get to her mother, but using her powers in the way that her mom taught her to. And yeah, so it's really entertaining. It's really unique. There's dragons, there's mystery, there's intrigue. 
but I absolutely love this. In fact, I need to finish the series because I believe there is a movie <laughs> based off this. So the author is from Denmark and so it's like a translated movie and this is also I believe a translated book. Could be wrong but I believe you can find the movie on YouTube or you can find it in other places I'm not entirely sure but that's I know you can find the trailer for sure on YouTube. Yeah but highly recommend. I definitely want to continue this one because it's so unique, so different. My mom loved the entire series. She read this one and said it was really good. So yay. Okay and lastly I have one that I don't physically have and that is The Alchemists of Loom by words, names, help. Elise Kova got it. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is about a world, it's kind of like a steampunk fantasy world, and our main character, she is a dragon organ harvester, and the dragons are not totally what you're thinking. They're more like, they look like humanoid people, kind of have some features of dragons. They have wings, they have tails, but they're more human than dragon, and they're all weird colors, so like our main guy character is blue. So speaking of our main guy character, he offers our main female character, whose name I can't remember, a boon and as if she promises not to kill him for his organs because I believe he was dying and she's like, I'm gonna take your heart. And he's like, if you don't, I'll give you something nice. This is such an imaginative world. I don't read much steampunk um, just because I can't quite get my head into that space, I think. But I really enjoyed this because it had that fantasy element too. Our main character was strong-willed, uh, a little stubborn, and only kind of thought about the goals she had. And our blue guy character, whose name I also can't remember, he had his own goals too. And it was just so, so good. In the second book, there's a lot of crazy twists and turns. And in the first book, there were two from what I remember. The third one was kind of meh. But I don't remember it's been so long. I listened to these on audiobook and the narrators were fantastic. Um, if I ever reread them, I would like to read them physically this time. I actually own the second book because I like the cover <laughs> and I can't find the matching covers. So I definitely recommend this one if you want like a steampunk fantasy, something a little more unique, interesting, and also by a little lesser known author because pretty sure she's like an indie author. She's got a lot of books a lot of books and I've read four of them. All right everyone so those were the six underrated obscure backlisted all of the above books for you guys to check out. Uh, let me know down below which one you think is the most interesting. Uh, make sure you subscribe give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys very very soon in the next video. Bye bye!